What's up guys, Demeter122 and it's list day. Ah yes, list day. And uh, today, I'm switching back to the old point and shoot because the GoPro doesn't work. It's too dark down here and uh, hard to light and the GoPro apparently has a, a small light sensor. So uh, I got a new camera coming in coming in the mail, but for, for today we're gonna have to deal with old and busted. And today's list is gonna be the top five brickiest cards in Yugi Mans. Doing a top five because uh, Amanda and I got a new refrigerator and had to do some kitchen remodeling light stuff and uh so a bit busy this weekend <laughs> bricking in Yu-Gi-Oh is the worst whenever you would go to draw a card and you hope it is the one card that can change the tide of the duel and it ends up being you might as well have skipped your draw phase it's pretty disheartening when we talk about bricks in Yu-Gi-Oh we could be talking about an entire deck where it's just like monarchs or blue eyes where when it goes off it goes off but there's a possibility for just a bunch of dead hands or uh, certain cards that just like uh, you don't want to see them in your hand they're just total garnets and they just don't do anything and they want to be in your deck but the brickiest cards in Yu-Gi-Oh are those cards that are just like impossible to play unless like the board state is extremely specific so today's list is gonna be a bunch of those really bricky cards that you never want to draw the fun thing about them is uh, if they go off a lot of times they're pretty good they're just often dead so without further ado the top five brickiest cards in Yu-Gi-Oh Number five is Psyframe Driver. Psyframe Driver is like a level six. Psychic Light that uh, doesn't do anything. What makes this thing a brick is that uh, you don't want to see it in your hand. It's it's just a, a monster that requires a tribute summon that doesn't really do anything. What you're supposed to do is you summon it off the effect of one of the hand trap Psyframes in order to stop your opponent from doing a thing and then putting some monsters on board. People like to say Garnet is a brick, but Psyframe Driver is, is, is certainly more of a brick than Garnet. Garnet won't even be on this list because at the very least it's a 1900 beat stick you can summon so it's not completely dead in your hand but like driver ugh, you're not sacking a card for this why would you do that? That's terrible. It's dead in your hand and because it's a vanilla we can't even have any fun talking about it so number four. Number four is Furin Kazen, a normal trap card. All right here we go baby. If you control an earth wind fire and water monster Apply one of the following effects. Destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Destroy all spell and traps your opponent controls. Discard two random cards from your opponent's hand, or draw two cards. What makes this card an absolute brick is it is a trap card, so it is slow, so it doesn't do anything the turn you would top deck it anyway, and its activation condition is uh, having a bunch of unlike attribute monsters on board. But its effects are really good. Uh, they're all basically a bunch of different banned or war banned cards. Rugeki, Harpy's Feather Duster, Delinquent Duo, and Pot of Greed. So if you could manage to actually get these effects off, they're, they're very good. And being on a spell speed two trap card, does lead to some different utility, especially with the first two. But again, you just have to have an extremely specific board state, so the card's gonna be a brick most of the time. There is a couple monsters in this game uh, that can count as multiple attributes, which can help you do this thing, but now you're building a deck around it. Which you're gonna find that most of these cards on this list only really work when you completely dedicate your strategy to activating them, which that's not a good. Number three, Huge Revolution. Huge Revolution, another trap card. Like I said before, trap cards are inherently bricks when you draw them because you can't do much with them unless it's like, I don't know, evenly matched. But they're even more of a brick if you gotta have some convoluted activation condition. This card can only be activated during your main phase. What? When why is it a trap card? When people running about, oppressed people, and united resistance are face up on your side of the field. Destroy all cards your opponent controls and send all cards in their hand to the graveyard. The three monsters you need, people meandering around, miserable people, and Star Wars Resistance, are all a bunch of unlike attribute uh, type and level monsters that are vanillas. I suppose you can summon them with message in a bottle. Like we talked about like last list, that's a thing I suppose. But again, you're dedicating an entire deck to summoning a three random vanilla monsters just so you can resolve one trap card during your main phase i mean if you can do it uh it's an absolute blowout of a card but uh nah, it's not happening number two is card of the soul card of the soul is an interesting normal spell card that allows you to essentially search any monster in the game with some caveats what do look at your deck 
<laughs> it really says that. And if you do, what? You can add one monster from your deck to your hand whose attack and defense equals your life points. You can only activate this thing once per turn. You'd be lucky if you can activate it once per duel. Okay, in a game that starts off with 8,000 life points, it's not exactly easy to find a monster in your deck whose uh, attack and defense equal to anything remotely close to the starting life points. Unless you're trying to search Obelisk the Tormentor, this is a very piss poor setup card. Uh, it's a search card, so that's its function. Granted, in Duel Links, it'd probably be a lot better because uh, you only have four K life points, and uh, that means your yeah, options are probably a hell of a lot more wide open. The issue is that's still banking on your life points being exactly the sum of an attack and defense of a monster in your deck. Unless you build a deck around it or have some weird wombo combo that pays a very specific amount of life points to then allow you to make this card live, it's going to be dead most of the time. What makes this even a bigger brick than like the other two is the other two, yes, they are bricky trap cards that are slow, but at least their activation condition is within the realm of like, you could probably set it up if you want. Wanted to. This uh, would require something very specific, but it would be really cool if you could like build a wombo combo that just along the way puts your life points at a position where you can search a very specific card for said combo. That would be really cool. It might even exist currently in the game, just no one's thought of it because who's doing that kind of math when building like play lines? Remember kids, when you're trying to wombo combo, always remember, can I activate card of the soul right now? All right, we got honorable mention, Sophia, the goddess of rebirth. Level 11 dark fairy with big number. Cannot be normal summoned or set, must be special summoned by banishing a face up ritual fusion synchro and Xe monster from anywhere on the field and cannot be special summoned by other ways. This card special summon cannot be negated. And when this card is special summoned, banish all cards from players, hands, fields, and graveyards. Just nuke everything. Cards and effects cannot be activated in response to this effect. Woo, there we go, boy. It's an honorable mention because uh, she big number, and when she hit the field, she's absolutely a, a game-winning play. Your, your opponent is going to lose to this, most likely, because they'll, they'll have absolutely nothing. They're top-decking into something next turn, and you have a 3,600? Yeah, 3,600 beat stick on board that's just hitting them in the face. It's going to be pretty hard for them to, to rally next turn, if not even the turn after. So th this, it's probably a game-winning move. And with decks like DDDs, it's probably not unreasonable to build a deck around it. It wouldn't be viable meta contenders or anything, but you can certainly conceivably do it, hence why it's only an honorable mention. And what I do like is that it, it's from anywhere in the field, so uh, it, it could be an interesting side deck card in a deck that plays like two of the, what is it, four types or something, and there's like a meta deck right now that plays the other two. It'd be a fun side for you, I guess. So uh, that's cute. And we have a dishonorable mention as well. Red Eyes Fusion. Red Eyes Fusion is the opposite of a brick because, I mean, you don't really want to draw it. You want to get it off uh, Anaconda, but it's the only thing your deck does anyway, so it's not really a brick. <laughs> it's the objective. Doesn't matter if it's TCG or Duel Links, you either just summon in Dragoons or summon in Slash Dragon, then that's all your shit does. It's incredibly disrespectful. Feels bad if they out it. It's not a bad card, it's just, it's not a brick. It's not a brick. All right, boys, number one, brickiest card in Yugi Man's Wolf, the Light Sworn Beast. But Dave, Light Swords are good! <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Wolf's a good card. He just, he just can be a brick. Level four, Light Beast Warrior with 2100 attack, 300 defense. That's yeah, a big boy for level four. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Ooh, there we go. Must be special summoned by an effect. That's actually an interesting summoning restriction. Most cards are like, they have an effect to summon themselves, and that's just the only way you play them. But this one's like, ah, oh, you can summon with other stuff too, but but it's gotta be an effect. Don't, it's gotta be an effect. Which, that's, that's actually kind of neat. And it can summon itself with its own effect, which is, if this card is sent from the deck to the graveyard, special summon it. See, that's why it's a brick, because if you draw it, uh, it is now stuck in your hand. And as a level four, you should be able to normal summon it. That's why Garnet is still okay if you draw it. It, it ruins your brilliant fusion engine, but you got a 1900 beat stick, which, you know, could be worse. You could have no monsters. But like, this is a monster in your hand that might as well not be one. It's stuck there. You can't do anything with it. The best hope is that you have another monster that can like 
pitch it to the graveyard or like summon it from the, the hand or or some hooey like that, which Light Sworns do have. But you're now relying on another card to fix your brick. And that is why it's a brick. And I like it as number one because like uh, all the other ones on this list are like, they're great cards, but they're just so entirely impossible to activate that you have to build a dumb deck around it. But Wolf is just like part of a standard Light Sworn strategy. He's just one of the harsh realities of playing that deck. You just have to deal with the fact that once in a while, your buddy Wolf betrays you and he ends up in your opening hand. Just the way the cookie crumbles, boy. That's just the way the life sworn mills. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this list. This one was actually kind of fun. If you want to get in the list creating hui, I've done this take so many times I forgot what I was trying to say. If you want to get into the Discord list creating thing, link description now. Oh, this list was actually not my idea. It was suggested by a person in my Discord. So. Uh, not all of these are my own brainchild that I have you guys just put together. It's sometimes I take your suggestions and uh, sometimes you guys have interesting ideas. So check that out and also on my Discord we do run tons of tournaments and, and uh, Ryan and Kieran have just jacked up the amount of tournaments we're doing so there's just tons of offerings all the time. So if you guys want to play some real Yugi Mans or even like Duel Links in some kind of format that's not just like no format like it has been for like a year, that's a fun option for you too. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I will see you guys next time, hopefully with my new camera. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. No time left in the video. I summon Dark Magician, declare direct attack. Subscribe for vids. Told you I was the master.